Hey everyone, welcome back to the Saxon House. Today we have been dressing up the thatch, kind of blending it in really. Uh, we probably should have done that way earlier on as and when we laid the elms onto the rafters itself. Traditionally you would kind of shape the elms, then you would get them you know, pinned in and then you would use a legget or a drifter to kind of uh, dress the thatch and blend it in. But like I said in the last episode, we wanted to lay a lot of the yelms down first, just so we knew how many we got. I went and got a few more the other day, and we've just literally now, four o'clock in the afternoon, ran out of water reed. So that is it for the thatch. <clears throat> Not gonna get any more. I'm really pleased with what we've got there. Never thatched before. Both of us has never ever done any thatching. No apprenticeship, no training. You know, it, master thatchers take years and years and years to get to the level that they do to create some awesome, incredible thatching. And uh, we've given it a go, first go, that is our first attempt at thatch. And to be honest, we're quite pleased. Well, certainly I am quite pleased. It's come out better than I thought. Whether it will hold, whether it will last, we don't really know, we don't know. It's definitely not gonna last as long as a professional thatcher would have uh, made it last, but we have learnt a hell of a lot along the way. and. Uh, Obviously, it's a father-son here with my dad. We're spending time together, and that's what it's all about. You can still see the sort of ledges or tiled areas where we didn't dress the thatch early on. Normally, that would be completely blended in. We've still got to sort out the eaves, um, and I've still... I did the ridge rolls today, uh, but I've still got to finish off the actual capping of the ridge, uh, which will be a different episode, probably. Um, but it's looking much more like an authentic... Anglo-Saxon house, we're pretty pleased. I uh, just want to say a huge thanks to everyone who watched the last episode where we did thatch the house. That was um, awesome feedback from you guys. Uh, yeah, let us know what you'd like to see us do here. We've got some uh, good plans, but it'd be good to hear your suggestions. Let's get back to work. So it's gone from thatching to a bit of uh, play well, work. No, no, we've gone to a bit of scratching. Because there's <laughs> so many spiders in that stuff. It's unbelievable. Last time we did it, I got eaten alive. I thought, I'm so pleased to get this stuff out of my car. <laughs> and now... Clean clothes, start again. I know I'm going to be bitten, but it's the way it is. I figure it's safer over here, get away from that thatch. <laughs> I'm on the uh, ground you're, and pound. You're really not an uh, advocate of thatching, are you, Dad? No, no, I'm just a casual labourer. I would say you prefer doing something like this yeah. than thatching. Yeah, no knowing, Having known you for so many years. Yeah, no spiders. Yeah. <laughs> You call them, what do you call them, oak, sp oak spiders? Uh, I don't know actually, they may have been kind of an oak spider, they're just thin ones, but there's plenty of them in that thatch. There is definitely, <laughs> yeah. there's plenty of them in my neck as well. <laughs> so what we're doing here guys is we are getting ready for a bit more wattle and daub, the old comedians are coming out again, yeah. and uh, we'll be going back inside the Saxon house to finish off the inside of the clay walls which are just under the eaves here. You can see that's all clayed from previously. We need to do the inside of it. Uh, and we are almost there. We are almost there. And then we've got some straw over here, uh, which is going to act as a binding agent. We've done this before in a previous episode. You do need quite a lot of water to do this. You do, you? yeah. It, goes, it, it doesn't go very far, the water. No. This, interestingly, is where we first started the thatching and you can see in that far corner there's like a bulge quite high up and that's where we we didn't spread the thatch out very much because we you know it was our first attempt at doing it we started in that corner and you can see that whole side is quite thick and that's uh, again because that we were complete beginners at that point we'd never done it and we wanted to lay it on quite thick and we realized it was too thick over there so um yeah it's a bit more a bit better blending but Still a bit more to go and like I say we're up to the ridge there with the thatch and I still got to cap it off and I'll, I'll show you that in another episode what I'll, what I'll do with that but it's we're super pleased with this this is looking really cool we've got to obviously sort out these gaps here get a door on there but it's looking awesome absolutely awesome very very pleased with our amateur that thatching what do you guys think about our first attempt at thatching? Let us know in the comments below. And if you've done thatching before, maybe give us, give us some tips. Um, we're happy to learn and uh, we are not afraid to have a go, as you can tell. I recognize this, Dan. Yeah. 
It's your water bottle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Wattle. <laughs> Uh, that's my hand wash because I'm going to go in there up to the elbows, hence sleeves rolled up. Going to mash it up with my hands, put it on there. But I'm going to obviously have something to eat later on. We're going to have a little cook up, aren't we? Yeah, we'll have something. Uh, so I've got to wash my hands. So that's my, I've made this out of a piece of plastic I found. A little tripod, some string. It does the job, folks. It does the job. Exactly. That is great. Woodland basin. I don't think people realise the amount of work that the Saxons <laughs> must have gone through. Oh man. Labour, physical, yeah. hard labour. Unbelievable. Labor. Really like when you consider what <laughs> the power tools of today, like they had no power tools, it was human power. Yeah, that's it. That is uh, no mean feat. The digging, the clay, yes, that was a special like the digging the that pit. Was special, folks, that was, yeah, yeah. digging the pit. That you, was that, another one of dad's favorites, yeah, that, that's wasn't it? up there with that, you know, I think, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was, uh, that was good. I enjoy it. I wouldn't uh, want to do a, it every day. It's, but a, it's the stones in the gravel that threw us. Yeah, it? that was hard. We, def we probably should have wattled better and taken our time to get hazel rather than pine. I think we used a bit of everything, didn't we? Because, yeah, we just used what was in this woodland and there was... And that's why we're using more... Watland all because the sticks are so, so far apart. As a result, we've now had to make more clay because yeah, exactly. we didn't have enough sticks thin for enough, the wattle. Thin, thin enough sticks. So, in hindsight, get more sticks, guys, and then you use less clay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so while Dad's finishing off the clay, I've cleaned up my hands a bit and I'm going to use a rake to tidy up the roof a bit because if you can see behind me where I was using the shears the kind of hedge trimming shears to, to trim off the ends of the water reed, they've fallen down onto the thatch itself and it doesn't kind of look very good and it's gonna affect the flow of the rainfall eventually. So I'm gonna uh, rake that off and then do any last minute bits of blending and, and dressing up the thatch. Uh, and then we're pretty much there, to be honest. Using this type of rake, just a kind of leaf rake, that way it can go into the thatch a bit and pull any horizontal bits of water reed that are, that are holding onto the top of the roof. If I was using a hard, thick metal rake, I'd probably end up pulling out all the liggers uh, and the hazel spars, so something a bit lighter. I guess some of those plastic leaf rakes might be quite good as well, but Saxon's had probably had some sort of uh, switch or rake, but this'll do.
So we'll see if you're still ticking tomorrow, Dad, after. What we're eating, for those who don't know, is white bait. And while I'm eating, <laughs> Mike can tell you how we came about securing these white bait, which is quite a rarity, really, you know, think, for, yeah, it's, for, uh, for us. We were fishing for mackerel. It was on tier fish in the episode, you probably saw it. We were fishing for mackerel. They were, ch well, we were fishing for a shark, really, and the mackerel yeah. came at about seven o'clock in the evening. And then they uh, charred, the, the sea was alive, the birds were just going nuts, and they, the mackerel were chasing the, the prey fish, these white bait, mm. up onto the beach, onto the shingle. And they were literally just stranded there, and we just harvested a load, didn't we? Just went along in a bucket, picked them all up. Yeah. I put some on hooks and cast them out, really, really close, just behind the waves where they were breaking. And we were catching really, you had some really jumbo mackerel, really big ones. Good mackerel, yeah, it's good fun. And some on lures as well. And we thought, you know what, we'd take some back and cook them and eat them. We are pretty much finishing up to the day. It's getting yeah. darker now. And uh, we're, you know, it's, it's hard with the thatching because it takes a long time. It's a very time consuming job, isn't it? Well, Is that's it? why thatchers in the UK, they, they take, well, weeks and months sometimes to, yeah, to, to, to re-thatch yeah. a whole house is easily months, I'd say. Oh, it's a long time. It's a long, it's, it's a yeah. long process. So it's, respect to the thatchers out there yeah. who are doing it for a living. It's not an easy job. Um, but, you know, we've enjoyed learning. We're pretty much there with the roof now. I've still got to finish what I'm going to do to cap it off. I've got some ideas again in another episode. We've got to finish the clay on the inside. We've got the gaps in the logs to finish and a few more little additions to the to the interior of the yeah. Saxon house. But actually it's pretty much, now we've got that roof shape to it, it's, you know, it's livable easy. Oh it's yeah, not, yeah, yeah. It's not gonna yeah. get wet. It's not gonna get wet. Not inside, there, definitely. It's been bone dry all the um, time. It right? might get the odd drip, but it's not going to pour down. It's gonna run off quite well. The great thing about that water reed, I'll show you in a minute, is that because it's a hollow stem, it's actually got really good insulation properties to it. And it's almost like being in a sleeping bag where you've got the baffles that create a gap between yeah. you and the edge of the sleeping bag. That traps your heat. And essentially that's what water reed does. Where there's all those gaps, that's gonna trap that heat and keep it really warm inside. So I guess that's part of the reason why the Saxons would have used it. Because of, of the yeah. insulation properties. And it's the same thing as why they put straw on the floor on the inside, oh, yeah. because oh, yeah. that breaks down and that chemical reaction, essentially composting, that chemical reaction creates heat. No, when you open a compost I'm heat, gonna have a chemical reaction. Yeah, <laughs> but when you when you move a compost heat, you get yeah, steam heat, coming out, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, right. A, that's exactly what they do with the straw. They put straw on the inside, it, it mulches essentially, it rots down over and time, heat, yeah. and it creates heat, and that's how they heated their houses, a primitive heating. So um, we're, what we're gonna do with the leftover cuttings of that water reed is chop it up a bit and yeah. put it on the floor. Yeah, so it's gonna be, that, yeah. yeah, we're gonna recycle whatever's not being used as they would have done because they're resourceful people and uh, yeah, get it on the floor. And then uh, I'm looking forward to spending a night in it with the thatch on the roof, definitely. Yeah, so next, next episode will be a bit more interior stuff, I think. And uh, we'll be getting there, we'll mm. be getting there soon. Thanks so much to everyone who's tuned into the series. It's been, it's been good fun. It's nice to be back to it after about three month break. Um, yeah, big thank you. If you're, if you're not subscribed already, hit the subscribe button, hit a like button if you enjoyed it. Check out Dad's channel, TA Fishing. Um, he's got his weekly fishing videos. There's links to that in the description. Yep. And also, if you'd like to help support the channel, we've got merchandise. Dad and myself have TA Fishing, TA Outdoor merchandise. Uh, that's at taofficial.com. Just a way if you want to help support the channel. But yeah. really appreciate you guys watching the videos and uh, we'll catch up with you soon in the next one. pushing it some of it under the beds as well because then that over time will break down and you get scientific about it it's what's called an exothermic reaction it's when it breaks down so it's essentially creating heat and uh, that will obviously act in the winter eventually when I put more in here will act as uh, 
your electric blanket, but non-electric. So I'm just basically building building this up. It will rot down, put another layer on it, rot down. I know people say about mice and things like that, but you're in the woods. That's what you're going to get. You're going to get mice and things like that. Of course you are. Um, anywhere in the kind of country, countryside and woods and wilderness, there's going to be mice. But if you're okay with that sort of thing, they're, they're generally not going to harm you. Tiny little mice and things like that. Rats may be a different story, but I don't. We've not seen many out here. We've put various traps out in the, in the cabin, pallet cabin, and we've not had anything yet. So more interesting things in the town, I think, at the moment.